Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Apples and Tiaras vlog. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd, and I'm actually getting ready to head into work for a couple of hours. Um, I have a meeting with my principal and my team teacher, Jocelyn. We're just gonna kind of go over the schedule um, for the next school year. We are doing something a little bit different than the rest of the school district in terms of like how the grade level is divided, like departmentalized, not departmentalized, who teaches what, and so um, we just wanna kinda go over the schedule. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna kinda explain what our situation is and then kind of what Jocelyn and I are thinking as far as schedule goes. You can also probably hear my pumps. I am currently pumping <laughs> um, because I'm getting ready to leave Wayne um, with Scott. It's 9.30, he's due to eat around 9.45. And so I'm just gonna pump on the way to school. Um, during my normal schedule at school, I would probably be pumping around 9.30 in the morning anyway. So I am gonna just pump right now. Um, hopefully I get a good amount. Um, I am not an oversupplier at all. I think I'm a just the right amounter, if not um, too little. We'll see. I When I went back to work with cash, I wasn't able to pump enough. So I'm really, really hoping that this time around I can do better. Um, but anyways, I'm using the Mom Cozy Pro S12 or something, whatever it's called. Um, they're not ideal. Um, I'm hoping that our insurance will provide us with another pump, something a bit more, um, something better. Um, but for now, this is what I have and it is nice because I can uh, do it in the car and I can still walk around and get stuff done. So anyway, I'm gonna grab my stuff, I'm gonna get in the car and then we'll talk about kind of what my fourth grade year is gonna look like. All right, so if you guys have been watching for a while, you probably already know what I was teaching last year. Um, but if you guys are new here, um, I do teach fourth grade in Northern Arizona. And last year I taught science and social studies on a team that did a three-way split, meaning there were three teachers. I taught science and social studies, someone taught ELA and someone taught math. And then there was this weird, <coughs> random writing block in the middle where all three of us were going to teach writing, but it never ended up happening that way. Um, it was just kind of weird. Like the ELA teacher would teach opinion writing and then I taught informational writing and then our math teacher did some writing support. And so it was kind of weird. Like we all kind of did our own little writing thing, but not really. Um, we all just kind of had our hands in writing. And so this year they have decided to kind of switch things up. So our reading teacher last year ended up swapping positions with our K through tw uh, K first and second math interventionist. And so they kind of switch swapped places. And so while I was on maternity leave, they kind of decided that um, our new teacher, I'm going to wait and ask her permission if she wants me to share her name. Um, but our new teacher is going to be a self-contained classroom, which means she will have her own group of 25 students. She will teach all subjects all day. They will not rotate at all. So they are just kind of staying in one place. Um, and then Jocelyn and I will be a dual team. So it's the two of us splitting up subjects and um, sharing two groups. So we're sharing about 60-ish kids, um, give or take. Um, so the plan is, is for me to teach reading, science and social studies. So really what it would be called is integrated reading. Um, and I'll explain the schedule in a minute. And then Jocelyn would teach math and writing. Um, each of us would have a, like a core block for math or reading. And then each of us would have a core block for either science, social studies and or writing. Um, but the schedule that was put together doesn't really match that. It's not very conducive to that um, because we have an hour long chunk of time that is for intervention. Um, and so it's called WIN and it's what, I've, what I need. And it's essentially it's for small group time for Title I students to get pulled and go get reading support. It's for SPED kids to get pulled and get support from the resource teacher. Um, and so it's a, an hour long chunk in the middle of the day. So what ended up happening is we got, um, like I said, an hour, well, we actually got an hour and 15 minute uh, core block in the morning. And then we have a special, a recess, and then we come back for win for an hour. 
I think it actually ends up being like 45 minutes by the time you get in there. Then lunch, then another hour and 15 minute core block for either ELA or math, whichever one we're doing. And then um, there's a 45 minute or 50 minute block of time for us to do our other subject. So for me, it would be science, social studies. For her, it would be writing. But the problem is, is both groups of students wouldn't get that block because there's only that 50 minute block left. Um, so what we're trying to do is, this is option number one, either like let's say student group a, uh, group A of students and group B of students, okay? So group A of students would stay with me for that 50 minute block at the end of the day for two weeks and we do science. And then group B would be with Jocelyn for that time doing writing for two weeks. Then after that two weeks, we switch and then group B is with me doing science and group B is, or group A is with her doing writing. So essentially they would get, you know, two weeks of science, two weeks of writing, and that would equal a month. That's four weeks of each subject per quarter because there's eight weeks in each quarter. So that's kind of the proposal that we're giving this morning to our principal. He's very open to our ideas. Another idea that we had was to potentially make our instructional blocks a little bit longer, embed our small groups into those blocks, take the win time out completely, and make those, make that time science, and then the end of the day writing. That way each kid gets science every day and each kid gets writing every day. The only thing is, is that our small groups would have to be tacked on to the end of our core instruction time, which would be about 15, 20 minutes, but we would be pulling two groups a day because we would have a group for each of our core classes. Um, so those are kind of the two propositions we're bringing up. The only thing is, is that our paras, our title paras um, would have to do push in instead of pull out or potentially pull out at different times. And so I don't know that that one's really gonna work. He's probably gonna go towards more the two week on, two week off thing, which is fine because I'll be teaching the same thing for a whole month. So I'll teach it once for two weeks and then I'll teach it again for two weeks. So, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Like we wanna make sure we get science in there because it is a tested subject in fifth grade. And we wanna make sure the kids get writing but also get a break from it because it is a lot, it's a beast especially in fourth grade, writing five paragraph essays, like it, it is a job. Um, and especially teaching and write and, re, and grading it. So, and I assured Jocelyn, you know, I can help you grade writing. Like we can just pick a day where we just kind of hammer it out. We tag team it. We grade all of them together. That way there's two of us bouncing ideas off each other, using the rubrics to grade. And then that way it's a little bit less pressure on her. Um, so, that is kind of why we're going in today. Um, we might even propose if our third teacher is up for it, if it would be just easier to do the three-way rotation like we did last year and then kind of switch up the subjects. I don't know. Um, I said I was willing to take on uh, reading um, and then Jocelyn would obviously keep math and then the new person would teach science social studies or Jocelyn would take reading, I would keep science social studies, and she would take math since she was a math interventionist anyway. But Jocelyn's already been teaching fourth grade math, so she'd rather keep it because you know you guys know, like it's so much easier to just stay in the lane you've been in. Um, so I'm a little bit stressed because like having a new baby and adding another subject and just mixing things up at the same time just it seems a little bit stressful to me. Um, so I'm honestly hoping that we just stick with the switch swap, like the two weeks on, two weeks off thing. I think it's just going to be much easier than having to flip up the whole situation. Um, and honestly, we're very interested in seeing like our data from last year, just to see how the kids did with a three-way split. Cause we were the only school doing a three-way split in our district. So we want to see how we compared to the other schools in the district um, to see like, okay, well maybe that three-way split model works and maybe the other schools would get on board. You never know. So anyway, that is why I'm going in today. Um, so 
I'm gonna I'm gonna drive. I'm still obviously pumping. Um, hoping to have. Um, I'll I'll get to school and I'm gonna try and pump like right up until 10 o'clock, just so that I have a good 30 minute pump. Um, and hopefully, you guys have to pray for me that I am able to continuously like provide because with the income I make and the new house, like I really don't think we can afford formula. So I'm gonna try and like, I have to make this work. Um, I'm gonna make a whole nother video on how I'm gonna balance pumping and school because I feel like there just isn't enough out there from teachers and how they manage it. It's, it's I've like, I've looked everywhere and I really can't find much. So um, I'll update you guys out on another video. But for now, we're gonna go in, we're gonna see what's going on, and I will let you guys know what we decide after the meeting on the way back home. Okay, so I just pulled over to check my pumps and I haven't made like anything yet. So I'm wondering if I just put them on wrong or what's going on, but usually in a 25 minute session, I at least get two to three ounces and that's if I go like two hours between a, fe a feed. And right now, I've been pumping for about 18 minutes and I got nothing. So, um, I'm going to just keep pumping and um, hopefully I will get something. <laughs> and then I might just tell them, because they know, they know I'm pumping. Jocelyn doesn't care if I pump. Kevin probably doesn't care if I pump. Um, got some drippage here. So nice. Um, but we'll see. I'm really worried about it. I'm trying not to stress. I'm trying to stay calm because I know stress really doesn't help. Um, so we'll see. All right, you guys. So, um, I thought I would update you. Um, I just trying to fix my hair. It's like jacked up. So when I pulled my pumps out, when I got to school, um, I hadn't really made anything, which was kind of scary and sad. Um, and that was two hours past the last feed. Then I threw my pumps on at 11 after our meeting and I got about almost three ounces and that was at 11. So that means that from 7:45, eight o'clock to 11, that was three hours between. So I got about an ounce per hour between. Um, I would like to be getting more than that. Like my goal is to get at least five ounces per pump, four ounces per pump. Um, because he's eating right now, he's eating every two hours. Um, Scott gave him three ounces at home and he seemed like he took that and was perfectly content with it. So luckily three ounces replaced what he fed him. And I think he's asleep now. So that's the pumping update. I am pumping again. I pumped at 11. And I'm gonna pump again. I'm doing like a power pump to see if I can just bring my supply in and hopefully that will help. But um, let me move you because this is way more sturdy. But I wanted to update you guys on what happened at our meeting. So I think we decided that we're gonna go ahead and do the two week split. Um, so that means that I will teach two blocks of reading and one block of science every day. And then the group I teach science, they'll, they'll get two weeks of science and then they'll go to two weeks of writing with Jocelyn and I'll get a different group of kids for science. So I'll teach two blocks of reading a day and one block of science a day and social studies will always be embedded in reading. So it'll either be like a, um, like a reading passage about one of the topics of social studies um, or if I feel like I'm covering science well like if I'm doing a good enough job covering all the standards then I can do a two-week social studies unit um, per quarter and I think I might try to do that where I do like so if there's eight weeks per quarter if I do I could even do a week of science a week of social studies while I have them for two weeks as long as I can cover all the standards, I think I'll be okay. I'm gonna check these real quick. Move them to express mode. Um, so I'm just gonna 
you know, um, the group we're getting is very low, according to the principal. Um, their test scores were pretty low. Um, I'm just making sure I'm getting something out and I'm not like, um, so they're going to be very low in reading. I think 50% of the grade level is minimally proficient in reading. Um, and so it's going to be definitely a challenge, but there's going to be a lot of room for growth. So, and I've taught third grade reading, I've taught fourth grade reading. So I'm pretty confident. It's just, it's been a while since I've taught it. So it's a little bit like stressful, but our district uses beyond textbooks. Um, in addition to into reading for our curriculum, we use into reading as a resource, but beyond textbooks is our assessment tool and uh, planning tool. So um, if you guys were interested in knowing, and then for science, I use a mixture of, we have a district curriculum for science, but I don't, um, I prefer to use Generation Genius and Mystery Science. So this year, because I'm only doing two weeks on, two weeks off, we'll see what I end up doing. I don't know that I would have time for Mystery Science because I'm used to, well, that's not true. Because if I have an almost an hour a day, I could probably do, just use Mystery Science and, and to com be completely fine. Um, we'll see. I'm going to feel it out. But anyway, that is the back to school update. Um, so now I can just go home and for the next couple weeks start planning. We go back, we report back to work the 28th of July. I will probably go back around the 24th just so that I can get my classroom ready and have everything in that aspect done before back to school meetings because I'm not going to want to um, set up classroom and all that stuff during that week. It's just way too stressful and I don't want to be gone at night and all that stuff. So. Um, I'll probably go back the 24th and then the first week of, or the first day of school is August 1st here in, um, Northern Arizona where I, in, where I teach. So anyway, that is the most recent school update. Um, why don't you guys comment down below when you go back to work if you're a teacher? And also if you are a breastfeeding mom and you're pumping at work, please leave me some feedback for what works for you. If you're a teacher that went back to school and pumped and like you're able to provide milk for your baby after going back, please let me know in the comments. I need all of the help I can get um, because I would like to not use formula um, at all costs. So please let me know and don't forget to follow me on all my socials and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.